What's happening YouTube? My name is Alex and welcome to another TV box review. The long-awaited next box A1 is finally here. So inside this we have the Unlogic S912, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage and of course running Android 6. I did hear a lot of good things about this box so I'm very curious to see if they're true or not. As always I left some links in the video's description if you wanna check this out. Next let's see what comes with this and then let's see how it performs. Let's begin. First things first, the box. So on the front here we see the next box logo here, Android 6, uh, onto this side just next box A1 and onto the back we see some specifications about the A1 itself. Inside the box nothing too special, we get the user manual, the user manual is in English and it has a few pictures. We also get a remote control, the remote control is made out of plastic, takes two AAA batteries and I do recommend using a wireless keyboard and mouse to this TV box for a better experience. Another thing in the box will be the HDMI cable, so an HDMI cable like most HDMI cables. And lastly the power adapter, the power adapter looks just like the power adapter that we find on most of these TV boxes. Now onto the TV box itself, so it is made out of plastic entirely, does look a bit different than most TV boxes. Um, we see the next box logo right there, onto this side we can insert a SD card. Onto this side we don't have anything and turning the box around we're gonna find the power adapter port, the optical audio, AV, network adapter port, HDMI and two USB ports. So unfortunately we only get two USB ports. Turning the box around we're gonna get some rubber feet right here and some holes so it doesn't overheat. As soon as we turn on the box we get the next box logo and this is the same that we've seen on other next box um, TV boxes. And this is their boot up animation. It takes about 25 seconds or so and the box starts up. The first thing we're gonna notice is the launcher. The launcher is the same one that was used in other next box uh, TV boxes so it looks uh, very familiar and with this uh, it means that we don't have a navigation bar at the bottom of the screen or the notification tab on top so that is disappointing because I really really like the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen. Let's start by going to apps and see what apps come pre-installed with this. So you have to click on that uh, twice. Uh, a lot of these are apps that I already installed. So we do get this Cloud TV, the browser, this app right here, uh, the gallery app, Film On, the Facebook uh, app, Miracast, this one right here, the Play Store, which is the most important one. I do believe that this box has root access because uh, we see this app right here. Aside from that, we just see the YouTube app, so it comes with a special YouTube app because one of them I actually installed from the Play Store. So um, we'll have two YouTube apps because I installed one from the Play Store. So that's about it for uh, the apps that come pre-installed. Let's go into the settings app. So the settings app uh, looks a lot like uh, the app that we've seen on most of these TV boxes, so pretty standard. But network here we can either connect to the Wi-Fi or through a cable. And since we are here, let's check out the speeds uh, through wired connection and through Wi-Fi. On the speed test app, through wired connection, we get a very, very good uh, download speed. So this is through a wired connection, these two right here. This is on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network and this is on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network. So the speeds on Wi-Fi are okay, not the absolute best, but better than uh, a lot of TV boxes. And we are back to the settings app. A display here we can just uh, change the screen resolution so this will be different depending on what TV you have connected to your box. But screen positioning can just uh, zoom in or zoom out the screen and we also have a HDR mode. Next at sounds. So sounds are important. The digital sounds here we can just select um, depending on uh, your setup. So I tried DTS files and Dolby Digital files. On Kodi, DTS files don't work very very well, I mean uh, the sound cuts out slightly every few seconds, but it's barely noticeable. If you do use the player, the movie player that comes with the box, so I'm gonna show you which one, uh, so it's this one right here. If you do use this movie player, DTS uh, sound works really really good and also Dolby Digital, but Dolby Digital also works very well um, on Kodi. So keep that in mind uh, if you're gonna be playing some uh, movies on Kodi, the sound, uh, the DTS sound may not totally be smooth, like not very very good. So you'll have to use this movie player instead.
And once again we are back to the settings app apps, here you can just see the apps that you have installed, the storage and reset um, will go there in a bit. Let's check out the languages that um, are available onto this particular TV box, so I'm just gonna scroll through this uh, quickly, hopefully you see the one that uh, you are interested in. So a lot of languages available as you can probably tell. And that's it for the languages. So we also have uh, Bluetooth onto this uh, TV box, so I will be playing two games uh, later on in the video and I will be using a Bluetooth controller so I can uh, make sure that uh, that works really good. So let's go to more settings here. And at the more settings here we can check the storage and USB. So because this uh, TV box has Android 6 you can uh, install an SD card as internal memory. So you're just gonna put in the SD card and the format that as internal memory. So we are not limited by the space uh, in here. Out of the 16 gigs, we have about 10 left. So 10 gigs uh, that you have free, but um, if you install that uh, SD card, you can have more. And since we are here, let's check out the speeds for the internal memory and the RAM. For the internal memory we get a reading speed of about 48 and a writing speed of about 20, so not the highest speeds. And this is the speed that we get for the RAM. And back of the settings app, here if we go to about media box, here we can see the model number which is the A1, then the Android version which is Android 6.01. So that's about it for the settings app onto this TV box. And I wanted to touch on the launcher just a bit uh, before we go any further. So if you click on these tabs right here, you can basically add apps right here. So these are just um, folders and you can add any apps that you want. So you just press the plus and then add uh, anything that you want. At local it's the same thing and at settings here we can just change some information about uh, the weather some stuff here uh, at other so you can change the theme for example you can make it dark or uh, whatever uh, you desire and at system info we just see whatever um, version of the software the box has so this is about it for the launcher for those of you that don't know what Kodi Center is so this app right here onto the main launcher so this is basically an app that lets you install add-ons onto Kodi. So for example, if you are looking for some sports add-ons, you'd click on this and then you can install any add-ons from here. Add-ons can also be updated from here. So I guess it is a useful um, app if you don't know where to look for um, Kodi add-ons. For those of you that are interested, the box does come with root access from the factory. And this is the information that we get from the Digital Rights Management app. So keep in mind that uh, you will not be able to play Netflix in HD onto this TV box. Moving on to the Antutu benchmark, here we get a score of about 37,000 and at info here we can see some information that we already know about the next box A1. Moving on to the Geekbench 4, here we get a multi-core score of about 2300 and a single core score of 459. Down here we can see some info about the system and all the way at the bottom here some more information about the test itself. And for the last benchmark test on the iStorm Extreme we get a score of 6168 and down here we can see some details about the score. And just to double check everything that we already know, this is the CPU Z app and I'll just scroll through this uh, here. And I just want to see the temperature of the processor at this particular time after we skip that head. So 67 degrees after all those benchmark tests. So not bad at all. On the A1 we get Kodi 16.1 with their own skin on top of it. I'm just going to go to system here and uh, system info so I can show you what uh, we have available here. So I'm just going to scroll through this. And as you imagine we have a lot of add-ons. So if we go to videos here and um, add-ons we're gonna see that we have a whole bunch of add-ons. So you can install all the add-ons that you want uh, through that Kodi Center uh, app. So it's very very easy to do. Now let's open a stream from Kodi and see how well it does. So we'll try any of these and uh, hopefully we get a working one. So let's try the first one I guess. Hopefully it uh, starts up. So I guess that will not work out. Oh, maybe it's gonna actually work. So it took a bit, but uh, it did start up. 
that's how the movie actually looks. Uh, it's not uh, the TV box. So uh, this is not the best quality because uh, I think it just came out uh, a few days ago. But as you can probably tell, uh, it does uh, seem to work uh, fairly good. So I don't see any reason why Cody wouldn't uh, do good on this uh, TV box. And since we are here anyways, uh, we might as well check what files work onto this TV box. So I know that this one uh, will work okay. I'm just gonna resume from uh, here, just so I can show you how well it does. And uh, yeah, no issues with this one uh, whatsoever. If I go back, so I'm gonna stop this one, um, and the following one it's gonna be this uh, 59 frames per second 4K file. Now, this one is not gonna work, unfortunately, so we just get that black screen that uh, we always get onto these uh, TV boxes, and there is no way of actually exiting this, you have to exit the uh, code completely, so like this, and then uh, open it once again. So let's try the following 4K file, which is at 50 frames per second, so this one here. Hopefully this one does better, and yes, this one does uh, much better than the first one. I'm not sure why the first one doesn't uh, exactly work on most of these. So this one does okay. Let's uh, stop this and move on with this uh, 720p file. This one will do fine, so I'm just gonna skip forward a bit. And as I was uh, expecting, it does uh, absolutely fine. So we'll stop this one as well. And moving on to the next file, which is this one, the most uh, weird uh, show ever. Let me scroll to it the end here a bit. And as you can probably tell, this one uh, also does okay. So we'll stop this one as well. Okay, moving on to this file here. This one also does uh, very good. So the only one that doesn't work is that uh, 4K file at 59 frames, uh, 59 frames per second. So I'm trying to get uh, out of this one. All right. Oh, and another one that's not gonna work. It's uh, this one here. So this one doesn't work in Kodi or. Uh, the other uh, player that comes uh, with uh, the TV box but uh, you can get that uh, going if you install IMAX player and this is another 4k file filmed uh, with my phone and this one also does um, okay so these are the files that uh, will work onto this uh, A1 TV box and keep in mind DTS and Dolby Digital work okay on Kodi however if you want uh, the perfect sound uh, you are gonna have to use the player that comes with the TV box. I have the Miracast app uh, open and uh, it does seem to do very very good. I'm connected to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network. So if I open the gallery app here I can just scroll uh, through whatever apps I have. If you're gonna be playing some videos from the phone uh, it's not gonna do good and it's gonna be rather slow. So a lot of lag but uh, for watching pictures uh, it does seem to do very very good and uh, there are no issues whatsoever. I have the YouTube app that comes pre-installed with the box opened. Uh, I wasn't able to get the YouTube app uh, that I installed from the Play Store uh, working but the app, the YouTube app that comes with the box seems to do very good and uh, the maximum resolution is 1080p and uh, for this particular video it's 60 frames per second as well. So let's uh, watch a bit of uh, this and see how well it does. So it does seem to do fairly good, very very smooth and um, yeah I do think that it works uh, really really good. So the YouTube app 1080p 60 frames per second. I have GTA San Andreas uh, playing, I'm gonna max out um, all the settings here, see how well uh, this box does. Shadows advanced, visual effects max, everything is at max uh, for the display. So we'll see how well uh, this does and let's start playing the game. Alright, so maximum settings on GTA and it does seem to go uh, rather okay. I was trying to stop a car, so let's stop this car. I need that shit you drive. Um. 
I don't really see a difference uh, between maximum settings and uh, whatever regular settings that I uh, usually use and the graphics are kind of the same so but uh, this seems to go uh, fairly good let's uh, beat these people up here Come on, bitch. Oh, so you see it on the in the background that it becomes like black. So let's get in the car. Keep driving a bit longer. So yeah, GTA seems to do really really good uh, on the A1. Uh, the next game that I'm gonna be playing it's uh, FIFA 16. So I'm pretty sure that one uh, will do well as well. So uh, let's uh, try that one, that one uh, and see how it does. Alright, so I have FIFA 16 uh, playing. As you can probably tell it does uh, seem to do very good. So I, I don't see this uh, box having any issues uh, for games and uh, stuff like that. Unbelievable. So, as you can uh, probably tell, FIFA 16 does do really, really good. Alright, and it's time to conclude this video. So, I don't necessarily like the launcher that comes uh, pre-installed on this box. Um, again, you can install another launcher. I think I have Nova Launcher uh, installed somewhere here. So, you can uh, change the launcher anytime you want. Keep in mind that you're still not gonna get the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen uh, even with uh, another launcher. So the navigation bar is not gonna be here. Other than that, everything seems to do very good. The Wi-Fi worked really good. Miracast worked uh, really good. DTS and Dolby Digital work uh, very good if you use uh, the player that comes with the box. And uh, that player is somewhere here, but I uh, don't see it. So this movie player um, right here. So everything seemed to do very very good, even YouTube 1080p at 60 frames per second, the only file that we couldn't play was that um, 4K file, however in reality you're not gonna actually play any 4K files because there are no 4K files anywhere and if you're planning on streaming 4K files, yeah that's definitely not gonna happen. So overall this box does seem to do really really good, but I just wish it would have that uh, navigation bar at the bottom of the screen. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you did like the video, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.